Welcome to episode 245 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host today. We're going to talk about why I'm wearing a Phillies hat and, and also a couple things about leadership. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. All right. I usually don't break protocol, but today I'm wearing my Phillies hat to work because last night... The Phillies won the National League pennant, are, will be, and will be in the World Series for the first time in 13 years. 13 years ago, I, like, had a kid. I actually had a kid and a baby. I had two, not four, and they were a lot little. A lot of things were different 13 years ago, but I'm super excited. I'm excited for the city. I'm excited for the players, and the more I look into the situation of why they made it, I'm actually mostly excited for the leadership story that is behind this year. If you don't follow baseball, you don't need to. I'm going to explain it really quick. So the Phillies started out this year with a, a coach named Joe Girardi. That might sound familiar because he was the coach of the Yankees, and they won like five World Series, and they were just an epic, epic baseball team for a really long time. Well, Joe Girardi comes to the Phillies, and we think, great, this is going to be the coach of the Phillies. We have some great talent. We're going to have a great year. Well, after a kind of a 50-50 start, the Phillies fired him. They fired the man. Wasn't working out. Well, if they're going to fire a coach when the season's like a third over getting going, what the heck do you do to kind of turn it around? Well, the Phillies turned to who is called the bench coach. So that's the coach who stays and is not out front. He's not making the calls. He's actually kind of coaching the team behind the scenes. Name Rob Thompson. Now, Rob is basically a 59-year-old rookie at being the manager or a skipper. is the coach, the guy in charge of a baseball team. He spent a lot of time coaching um, behind the scenes for years and years. Phillies have had him on the team for a few years, and they knew that when they had to let Girardi go, that Rob was the guy they were going to you know, flip the, flip the reins to for at least a couple years to see uh, what happened. Well, it turns out he was like the first person in Phillies history to win 61 out of 100 games coming up. They just squeaked into the playoffs, and they just absolutely dominated through the playoffs and now they're in the world series and they just crushed every team they've gone against. So obviously there's a lot of roller coaster riding. Uh, the fans are going nuts. And as I looked more into the coaching background, there are some amazing things about this coach. Number one, the first thing that really made an impact on me is when I saw him give a post game speech when they won the second round of the playoffs. And in that speech, he was very mild mannered, very reserved. And he said these things. He said, I've never seen a team serve each other like you've served one another. I'm so proud of you for doing that. You are all so talented. And I was like, I don't know. I felt like I was watching an episode of Ted Lasso, frankly, in the way he just delivered this to the team and wasn't like, we did it. We're great. He was like, you've served one another. You played selflessly. And I'm proud of you. I mean, it just blew my mind. I was like, wow, there's something different about this guy. There's something different. And the more I look into it, he grew up um, kind of going to baseball games. His dad was a factory worker, and his dad kind of planted in him. He saw, they saw some people walking out of the stadium with suits on, and he was like, see, that's how professional baseballers play. Uh, dress. That's how professional baseball players dress. And that made an impact on him. So here he is making his way through the season. And you start to see these players lining up behind him. Sometimes when somebody's filling in, right, the players really don't, um, you know, get involved. They're already kind of down because the season that, you know, could easily be, it would be easy to think the season has been thrown away, but they didn't do that. Actually, Bryce Harper, one of the Phillies' best players, wore a t-shirt that said, I roll with Philly Rob, right? Just really stacking up and lining up behind him. He brought a lot of structure, um, a lot of humility to the team. And people say, you can't outwork him. People are saying he will be there at 3 a.m. There's no one that has ever beat him into the stadium. They said he'll show up at 10 o'clock on Saturday for a 7 o'clock game, and he'll be there till 2 a.m. making sure that everything was right and looking over game and reviewing. And so people are saying this is somebody that, that outworks everybody too. And he plays aggressive ball but doesn't have an aggressive demeanor. There's a really great story that, that shows me a lot of what's going on behind the scenes with the team. On Father's Day, he showed up for a trip that they were going to take. They had to take a road trip. They had to go play a game. And everybody was dressed in, like, really nice suits. The whole team. 
and that's a, a usual like departure from what people usually wear, right? People are always kind of like wearing the drip, wearing the swagger, right? They want to get the photo op going on the airplane, sunglasses, chains, you know, just headphones doing their thing. They all had suits on. And he was like, what's this? What's going on? And they're like, well, it's Father's Day. It's to honor your dad. Because they remembered the story he told of, you know, wearing the suits. And that's how professional baseball players dress. Kind of like it's an aspirational thing. So there's one picture that hangs in his office. is the picture of everyone in their suits to honor his dad on Father's Day. Now, don't tell me when you hear those stories that you don't think the winning and the culture has a lot to do with the leadership change. The winning and the culture have a lot to do with the servant leadership approach. And I think an important, part, an important point for us to take away, the verbalization of that on a regular basis. He had the microphone. He had the media. And what did he say? I'm proud of the way you played selflessly. I'm proud of the way that you've served one another because he knows that a team divided will never win, no matter how many stars or ringers you have. Again, I was telling you, if you haven't seen Ted Lasso, I feel like this is like a season of Ted Lasso wrapped up into this story about Rob Thompson and the Phillies that have made it to the World Series. Now, going into the World Series, they have a really all kinds of momentum. The Astros have obviously been to the World Series quite a bit. Really strong team, but here's a little secret. Everybody who doesn't have a dog in the fight that isn't, per se, an Astros fan, if you're not per se an Astros fan, then guess what? You want the underdog to win. So it is going to be a wild ride going into uh, November with the World Series and the Phillies in the World Series, which is why I'm wearing my hat. But again, I'm so much more excited about the story behind why I believe the team has gelled, why the team is great, and a little lesson I think we can all take away to the things that we lead in our lives It is easy for me, speaking personally, it's so easy to get wrapped up in the details and the momentum and the task lists that I have and the agendas that I have. And just forget that people need to be cultivated, encouraged, that the right behavior needs to be celebrated and not necessarily just the results that work. Because what do you do when the results aren't great? What do you celebrate? Well, if you have a culture that serves one another, you can start by celebrating that and watch what happens as trust builds within your team. As people understand, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, these other people have my back. You know, one last thing I'll say before we go is that everyone on that team knows, this is part of an article I read, everyone on that team knows that if you have a bad game, it does not mean you are benched because he doesn't play it like that. How about that when all of a sudden the consequence of having a bad game isn't you're out. Instead, it's let's work together and there's trust and there's belief in one another. So I hope that gives you a little perspective for something that you're doing in your life today. I hope that you go out right now and encourage somebody for serving someone else, for being selfless. I hope that you can embody a little bit more selflessness and get all that good energy from that leadership story we're watching unfold in real time as the Phillies, my Phillies, are in the World Series. I'll see you next week. We came to fight.